In today's video, I want to show you my latest transition effect that you can get from my coffee page. It's called Raindrops Transition. I created it when I was editing my latest travel video. I think it looks pretty cool and it might suit to some of the shots very, very well. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. So first, I'm going to show you how you can install it and use it. And if you're wondering how it was made... Anybody? <laughs> you know Fusion and you want to experiment by yourself, you want to create it on your own, I will show you what's happening under the hood. It popped the hood. Pop the hood. Pop the hood. What nodes were used and how it's connected. Okay, so let's start. So as mentioned before, first you need to get it from my coffee page. Once downloaded, you should have raindrops DRFX file. So simply double click it and wait for the window to pop up. A window like that override raindrops in my case it's override but in your case it will be install so just click install or override you might also need to reboot your davinci resolve because sometimes it's it does not refresh uh, correctly so once you've restarted your davinci resolve go to effects video transitions and search for raindrops and that would be my transition. Uh, you just drag and drop it between the clips like so. One remark, make it quite long because you want to see the raindrops falling on the surface so it looks more plausible and more subtle and smooth. So in the inspector, once you click the, the transition, just make sure it's, um, it lasts more than 40 frames, I would say. That will look decent. You might also need to go to playback, render cache and enable smart so that uh, the preview is smooth and you see how exactly the transition will look after you render it. So once this uh, red bar turns into blue color, your render cache is rendered and you can play it real time. So this is how it looks. In addition to that, you got in the inspector a couple of controls like copies, which means uh, maximum raindrops. By default, it's 10. You can uh, play with time offset between the raindrops. You can change the size, the maximum size of it. And you can also change the way it's located on the, on the frame. So just play with the random seed. If you think the default one is not covering well your shots, and this is pretty much it. Very straightforward. I didn't want to overcomplicate it with too many controls in the inspector. So now let's see what's happening under the hood in case you are wondering how it was made. And if you don't want to buy it from my coffee shop, but you want to do it on your own. So these are two, the media in, media one and two that you transition between. I use dissolve node to smoothly transition between those two uh, clips. And as you see uh, in the inspector, the background foreground is animated via modifiers, anim curves. If you know anim curves, that should be understandable for you. If you want to learn more about anim curves, I got separate video. Then you got Gaussian blur effect right after that. I animated the strength control with the anim curves as well. Then you got waviness. Let me show you how, how it works if I increase the scale. So I introduce more, more waves and so on, the strength. And actually in here I'm animating the blend control in settings tab, also using modifiers, anim curves. Then you got this uh, column of notes. So the first one is the simple ellipse mask. Uh, over the background node. So as you see, it's a simple circle because the ellipse mass is uh, not solid. I'm keyframing here actually the level. I want this ellipse to be slowly disappearing over the time. And I'm also keyframing the height and, uh, the height and width because as you see from the beginning, this um, circle is just uh, expanding like so. Then what I did was I uh, duplicated it by five copies. And uh, what I did was uh, each copy was uh, a bit different uh, with its size, X and Y. But also in the Jitter tab, I introduced some center X. And uh, 
a bit of size. So as you see, these five copies are not identical. They are random. So it looks more like a wave. Then I uh, added waviness. So the circles are not uh, regular, but distorted a bit by the waves. Then I have added another waviness with the different settings. So overall it looks uh, like this. And final duplicate when I duplicate everything by 10. But in the jitter tab, I've uh, changed the random seed and I've changed also a much more the X and Y center as well as axis X and Y. And as you see, the size control was also increased. So if I preview my final duplicate, I get something like this. And at the end, I used all of these circles as the input of the displace node as a foreground input actually, so that it affects the overall image. And in, in the displace node, I've um, increased the refraction strength to max, and I've added also some spread. I'm just giving you the idea how you can recreate it on your own, which effects I've used in Fusion. Maybe it's too advanced for someone who sees Fusions for the first time, but I didn't want to make this tutorial step-by-step -step for a total beginner. This is uh, just for the information for someone who likes this effect and want to play with it and want to create it by himself. Okay guys, so that would be it. Thanks for watching till the end. Hope you've learned something. If yes, tap subscribe and like if you haven't already. See you in the next one.